And so the translators then looked at the word again and said, so what really is taqwa? Taqwa then is not so much a mental condition or an emotional state of being in fear, but rather it is a state of being where one is constantly conscious of the fact that Allah is watching me. And because of that, you will see that now the translations will translate taqwa either as guarding against evil or a better translation you will see is God consciousness. And if you keep this translation in mind, now when you read the Quran, look at how it fits perfectly in every verse. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum Surely the most honorable amongst you in the eyes of Allah is the one who is most conscious of God. In other words, the one who is most present and aware of Allah. He is the most honorable because he is the most connected to Allah. For the month of Ramadan, we have the verse, Kutiba alaykumu siyam Kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum Fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may become God conscious. So that you may wake up. You see, sometimes when we talk about Ramadan, we look at it from one dimension only. We say Ramadan has physical benefits. It helps us purge our body and our stomachs. That may be true. But if that was the only reason, then those who are eating extremely healthy would not have to fast. Or for example, we look at it from the social aspect. We say Ramadan is so that we may feel the pangs of hunger and how the poor man feels when he does not know where his next meal is coming from. That may be true. But then there should be no Ramadan for the poor man who does not know where his next meal is coming from. But the issue is that the poor man also is haunted by an ego. And he also needs to wake up. And therefore, if we translate then taqwa as God consciousness, as awakening, then Ramadan becomes the month of awakening. The purpose of life becomes to awaken. And we will clarify what we mean by awakening uh, shortly, inshallah. The other thing about the month of Ramadan is that you will notice that in all the other ibadat, you are doing something. But in Ramadan, you are not doing. In Salat, you do something, you pray. In Hajj, you go and perform something. In Khums, you give something. But in fasting, what do you do? Can you show me at any point in time, right now I'm doing something called fasting? No. In fasting, you are not doing something. You are not eating, you are not drinking, you are not lying. You are not indulging in physical pleasure. And therefore, Ramadan then becomes a month in which you peel off layers of attachment and layers of distractions that obscure us and veil us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the philosophy of Ramadan.